What is happening guys and gals? Welcome back. It's summer, late summer. It is very hot. Uh, midday today, I'm off the water. But want to talk to you guys about something um, that I think is a very good topic. And that is walking baits. I can't think of a much better top water for snook. And you know, I throw these almost exclusively for snook. Um, I really don't throw many other topwaters at all. And even since I was younger, you know, walking baits have always been kind of synonymous with snook. They've always been kind of the go-to bait. Zara Spooks, right? The red and white Zara Spook was like the bait to go to. And we have so many more choices these days, right? There's every lure company has a walking bait. They're all a little bit different. Um, but what I'm going to focus on today is the actual differences between individual baits and what that means to you as far as how they perform and how they cast and how they look in the water. There's little differences, but they make a huge difference on the water. Okay, I'm going to cover that. I got six baits right here. I got some shots earlier in the pool of how they float because that's very important, how they float in the water at rest and how that relates to how they perform and how they move in the water. Okay, we'll look at hardware. We'll look at everything. This is going to be a deep dive into walking baits. If you want to catch snook, you got to know about these baits. These are the ones, I think. Stick around. This is going to be good stuff. right in okay as i said in the opening you know walking baits are such a big part of snook fishing for me that it's hard to imagine not having them um and honestly i've thrown probably almost every walking bait that's out there minus a couple of the very specialty bass baits i don't really focus on the bass baits as much because the hooks tend to be a little bit too light i like pretty heavy trebles for what i do um, for big snook um, one of the reasons why I use the baits that I use is because I really want a good hook out of the box. I don't want to have to change it out, okay? Um, but what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to talk about a couple of things today. I'll talk about the baits themselves. I'm going to talk about how they're weighted and how that affects the way they perform, how it affects the way that they perform in the water, moving, and how, how it affects the way that they cast, okay? Because those are two different things, but they're both going to be affected by how much tail weight the bait has. Okay, so that's important to know. So as you guys know, any of you guys that follow me, any of you guys that follow me at all, know that I, I use Yozuri baits. Um, they're my favorites, and they are very, very, very consistent, and they're very good to go right out of the box. But I'm going to shoot do some comparisons, and I did some shots in the water earlier of what they look like in the water compared to some other baits. Okay? And one of the things that is important to me with any of these is castability okay and that really has to do with the tail weight okay if a bait has a significant tail weight to it it's going to cast extremely well right so hydro pencil this bait from missouri it's got a tail weight i don't know if you can hear it it's right back in here i've cut one of these apart before and i know it's right here it doesn't move right where those little like designs are it's right there it's the same size as that one. See that ball in there? But it's fixed and it doesn't really rattle. Hydro pencil is pretty silent. Okay? The only noise you'll hear is the hooks hitting, hitting the bait. But when you cast this thing because that weight is there, this thing casts like a bullet in wind, across wind, you know, whatever. That is a big deal. Okay? It's not a big deal when you're making little short pitches might not as be as big of a deal in certain situations but you need to be able to cast this especially when you're fishing for snook you're covering a lot of water okay and you're trying to make long casts and cover areas and be very accurate and you don't want the bait to cartwheel on you that is like a nightmare a nightmare to me is casting at a big fish and then the bait starts cartwheeling and your cast becomes incredibly inaccurate not to mention it's probably going to foul on the line and it's going to land like a freaking mess Right, it's going to move a ton of water and scare away anything there. This bait and baits that are tail weighted well, okay, are going to cast extremely well and they're going to cast pretty much like that through the air, right? So you throw this thing, the hooks are going to bend back and it's pretty much getting sent like that, 
because it's tailwind. Now, let's look at a different bait. Okay, is there a spook? Okay, and this is the XT. This is their heavy-duty solid one. I used to throw these. Okay, this one's got a rattle. Now. A Zara Spook is not nearly as tail heavy, okay? So it sits very flat in the water, and I'm gonna cover that in a second. But it does not cast as well, not nearly as far, and it cartwheels a lot more often. And listen, you can go all day, and it might cartwheel and never cause a problem. But if you're going to throw, and you have an opportunity to throw at a big fish, and it cartwheels at that instance, and you miss your opportunity on that fish, you remember that. <laughs> Okay, I remember that. <laughs> and I don't want it to happen again. I want consistency when I go to throw it every time I know what the bait is going to do. I prefer a heavier tail weight than what this offers. Okay? So, consider that when you're looking at all your different walking baits. You know, skitter walks and all the things across the board. Top dogs, all of them. Okay? The more tail weight it has, the better it's going to cast. Okay? That's a benefit. Right, so let's talk about the pros and cons here. Extra tail weight is going to cast tremendous. Okay, great, accurate, far. Trade off. The trade off is since the spade is tail weighted in the water, it sits kind of like this. This is the water. Right, this is the water right here. It sits at an angle. This bait sits almost flat. Okay, and I'm going to show you the shots. I'll put them up right now. The shots of these baits in the water. You'll see the Uzuri is sitting like this and the, the, the spook is almost sitting like perfectly parallel to the water. Now, what does that mean? It means the spook's gonna be easier to walk. The first time you make that first little move on this thing, it's gonna go boop, 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 and just start walking perfectly. Very, very easy and very forgiving, all right, if you're not the best at walking the dog and you don't have that, you're not familiar with how that cadence works, right? This thing's very forgiving, it's gonna walk extremely well. These walk great too. They're just not gonna walk as easily as that, okay, in my opinion. But you have to find the trade-off there. I, there, and their weights, let me, let me say this too, there are baits that are more heavily tail-weighted than this. Um, a couple mirror lore baits come to mind, not Top Dog, but a couple of the other ones that I've thrown. They cast like a bullet, but they walk horribly. A couple of the small ones, you can barely walk them at all. They're very difficult to walk. So, Here's the rub, right? Here's the trade-off. So this one, you know, I was saying it casts extremely well. This doesn't cast as well, but this one walks better, easier, I should say, easier than this one walks, okay? And let me use this one too, Live Target, okay? Very popular bait. Tail heavy as well. Sits pretty, pretty much like this, okay? Casts pretty well. So let's say that this is kind of in the middle, okay? So, so what you guys need to figure out, and on, you, only you can figure this out, you need to figure out that kind of that balance between castability and how easy it walks, right? So maybe you would rather it walk super easy and it cartwheels sometimes and it doesn't cast as well. Or maybe you want it to walk, excuse me, maybe you want it to cast extremely well and you don't care that it doesn't, that it takes a little bit more, you know, effort to get it to walk well, or it's a little bit, you know, you have to know what you're doing to get it to walk the right way. For me, I like to be somewhere in the middle, okay? I've thrown enough of these and thrown for enough years to know how to walk them right. And I really, it's important to have that castability, okay? So for me, the Uzuri baits are the best of both worlds. You're getting the castability, you're getting you know, the right amount of float, you're getting the right amount of walk. Um, and not to mention, right, when we talk about hardware, the hardware, on a hydro pencil right out of the box is about the best you're gonna get with 3X trebles that are extremely sharp, okay? This is a brand new one, and I don't know if you can see this, but the, I mean, they're so, they're extremely tacky. They're grabbing me right now. See how it's grabbing me a little bit? They're sticky. Wire through, and I cut one of these open because <laughs> I wanted to make sure. <laughs> it is indeed wire through from there, from the tip, from the hook eye, all the way, not the hook eye, from where you attach it to the bait. From that eye, all the way to that last treble is a wire. It runs all the way down the base. So those hooks are not, those hook eyes are not gonna pull out, no way. A lot of these are not that way, okay? A lot of these hook eyes are molded in and they can pull out. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, 
but I'm saying it could. Okay. So even if you're going down to the smaller Yerzuri's, I throw this four inch, that's the top knock. And then this is the newer one, the five inch, same size as the hydro console, right? That's that five inch bait. And this bait has been producing a lot of fish too. Same hooks, not wire through, but hasn't become an issue yet. If it becomes an issue, I'll let you know. I don't think it will. It's pretty, they're pretty in there. But I'm, I'm, what I'm liking about this, and just to give you a little, my kind of opinion on these two, because they're similar. Okay, they're not the same bait, guys. These are two different baits. Hydro pencil, top knock pencil. Different bodies, different finishes, okay? This one has a knocker, this one does not. Okay, that's the tail weight moving, but it doesn't knock, okay? They work similar. They sit a little bit differently in the water, and I'll show you that. I got some footage of them in the water. They sit different in the water. This one walks a little bit easier. The top and knock walks a little bit easier than the Hydro Pencil does. But this is a noisier plug too. So I like this if there's a little bit of noise going on in the water, a little bit of chop, a little bit of low light conditions, things like that. You get, you get a little bit more in a quiet situation. I prefer the Hydro Pencil, okay? It's completely silent. You got that little bit of a little bit of noise from the tail weight, but not much. And then if it really gets quiet, then I'll drop down in size and I'll throw that four inch top knock. Okay, and this thing has really been getting crushed on a lighter leader, dropping down a 30 pound leader on this. And one of the things that's so cool about these is that unless you know what you're doing, they're basically like a stick in the water. Like you throw this out there and unless you know how to walk it correctly, it just pulls straight in, won't even move, right? You have to, you have to put the action into it. The angler has to do it. It doesn't do it for you. You have to put the action into it. I like that. I like to be, I like to have input, right? I want to be able to have some control. I want to have to use some skill in what I'm doing. So that's one of the reasons why I like these so much too. I'm not going to get into working the baits right now. I'm going to do a separate video on that. But what I wanted you guys to see and what I wanted you guys to kind of get a feel for is the differences. Okay, so to review, tail weighted versus not tail weighted, how much tail weight versus how little it has, huge difference. How it sits in the water, which is related to the tail weight, huge difference. There's not much to these baits, they're minimal, which is why I think they're so effective, honestly. No props, no pops, no nothing, very natural looking. This bait moving across the water to a fish makes a minimal amount of sound, but a mullet doesn't make a lot of sound when it's just skipping a lot of top, they're almost silent. Okay, so to a snook, that's a realistic looking bait. And also you have the ability to change direction with these things depending, the angler can change the direction. So I can double hit it to one side and get it to do two hits to the right, two hits to the left, a longer hit to the right, a shorter hit to the left. You can do all sorts of stuff. You throw a pause in there. Um, you really have complete control of a walking bait when you're using it. And I'm gonna get into, in a different video, techniques as far as how to work it i'll even probably do a beginner's video of how to walk the dog on walking baits overall because it's, it's not an easy thing to do i've taught hundreds of people how on my boat and everybody has it by the end of the morning they can do it so it's not it's not something hard if you don't know how to do it learn okay just get out in a pool get out where you fish throw these and learn how to walk a bait it's important um but other than that Consider all those things that I'm talking about, guys, when you go to choose your baits. Choose whichever one you want, okay? I know which ones I use, but maybe you prefer one that has less tail weight, or maybe you prefer one that rattles, whatever it is. But know how effective these are for snook, right? And that's pretty much all that I fish for, snook. One of the most, if not the most effective top water for snook are walking baits. So take what I've given you here, get out there, get some time on the water yourself, and go catch some fish. I'll see you guys next time.